It's real. It's real. You know the deal. You know the deal. Hey, it's Shante. And I'm Natalie. And welcome to What's the Deal, a podcast powered by the Norfus Firm. At the Norfus Firm, we solve people problems and have the great pleasure of working with employers all around the world on HR and DEI initiatives. Hey, hey. Hello. Hey. We got to get this song, man. Okay. What song is this? Which What's one? Beef? Yeah, we'll find it. I don't know, but they might try to charge us because, you know, royalties and rights and things. Yeah, and Biggie deser- Biggie's estate it deserves so, um, the, the, the coins. We might have to hum it. <laughs> we might have to hum it. <laughs> We're holding on. We're holding on. Fucking thread. We're holding we're on gonna push that, through. guys. We're going to push through. We're going to push through. Yeah. Okay. So why does this song, this this is the theme song of uh, of this segment of shows we're doing, um, Beef, a.k.a. Workplace Conflict, <laughs> that is just increased tremendously uh, post-pandemic. Um, and so... We, you'll hear us talk about a bunch of types of conflict because we want to get you all equipped for identifying it, uh, diffusing it, mitigating it, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what we got going on today? So this one is, we're talking about, uh, what? where are we in the, in the time? We had, it, we're in August? We're in August September. 2024. Yeah, so we're approaching this election here in the U.S. in November, and... It's going to be fun. Not fun. But so I think the, the point of this <laughs> one is, is just really, I mean, this is the time when folks really start to get into it in terms of like their political stances and beliefs and, and who's right for the country and who's not right for the country and what party does what and that and this one doesn't. And, you know, people take politics very seriously. It's, it becomes, for most, part of their identity. And there is zero... I mean, I don't think there would be any disagreement by anyone who has any clue about the politics in our country that they are incredibly divisive. Mm-hmm. They are incredibly inflammatory. Mm-hmm. They are incredibly um, uh, not thoughtful, right? And, and by that, I mean, we don't even seem to have leaders on any side of the table that are really putting effort toward unification or collaboration, right? right? It is really just like lobbying from one side to the other, to the yeah. other, to the other. And that conflict by itself, meaning just the leaders of our country and the conflict they have, it trickles down in wild ways. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know how often I really try, I'm really trying this election cycle not to do a ton of social media post reading because just go, as you know, I like to read comments because I just always am curious about people's perspectives and Again, I always look at, well, what, what's my reaction to this? But what are other people's reactions? To be like, oh, okay, I would have th- wouldn't have thought about that. But a lot of it is just very harmful. Yes. Like, it's not actually like we're having a productive conversation about a political issue. Right. We are starting to attack each other's character. Like, oh, you must be really stupid if yeah. that's what you think. Or you must have been born under a rock. Like, you're making it, you're, 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 you're making it personal in terms mm-hmm. instead of, like, what do we really need to do to come together? So I think we just live in a constant state of conflict these days in that regard. Yeah, and, and that's fine for outside, but... It's not really fine for it's outside. Not, but. It, uh, it's not. Okay, you're saying that it's because not. employers don't have to solve the outside. Right. But because so, we're a workplace podcast. Workplace. Let's yeah. be clear yeah. on yeah. who our audience is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and so, you know, um, because, but so right, leave that outside, but they don't because people are people. And where I show up, where I am, is that's where I am. That's who I am. So I'm going to bring everything into into the the office. And so that shows up. It could be a random conversation somewhere. And now... There's a blow up because I have a certain set of beliefs and you have a certain set of beliefs and we managed to start talking about those beliefs and now there's an issue. Yes. So it's fascinating um, that we are even having this discussion, mainly because when I think about my, my, my own legal career... Politics have always been really taboo to discuss at work, Mm -hmm. right? So it was kind of like a little bit of an open shut employers not we we not we're not going to do that here and and that's it but what we've seen in general not just related to politics is that lots of topics that used to be taboo are fair game in the workplace so um we just thought hey uh let's let's be let's think about some big potential for conflict that's coming up which is this because now people do talk about it at work again in my investigations Politics have come up a lot more than ever, and you're like, 
interesting that you're talking about any of this at work mm -hmm. to me because it, it doesn't, it's not really a workplace topic in my, in my opinion. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm in the same age bracket. So <laughs> no, you don't talk about this stuff at work. And to your point, a lot of things are, are that were once taboo are not taboo anymore. And so it's like what I would love to really get into, why does this happen? Why, why do people feel so emboldened or okay with, with being able to have these conversations at work? I mean, the only thing I, I keep coming back to is that we've just kept, we plowed through a pandemic. Mm -hmm. We didn't pause to cope. We didn't pause to even talk about coping. We didn't pause to acknowledge that there is going to be worldwide grief mm -hmm. from the people you lost from the sickness that people have experienced. I mean, people are getting COVID again and they're getting very sick. So it's like, we just kept going, which is like, if you, I, I'm certain, and especially we've done the, the trauma informed certification work too. It's like, no one is going to ever recommend that you blow through some monumental, monumental event in your life and not stop process and try to like make sense out of what happened. So if you think about that on a worldwide scale, we literally have not processed any of it. And people have, are fed up, mm -hmm. right? Like, you, if you just look at memes of how f folks are dealing with what they feel is price gouging, and, and it was fascinating to read an article the other day, like, people are giving up on even going to, like, fast food restaurants because they've gotten so expensive. Like, it is, it, people feel squeezed, yeah. right? Stuff is expensive. I can't afford an apartment. I can't afford. So then it just becomes like a, it's a pressure cooker. I don't give a... Yep, explain. We'll, we'll, we'll use an that. emoji mm -hmm. for that. It, and <laughs> I used the pressure cooker example mm -hmm. uh, the other day with um, a, a, bo a board chair with this big investigation I'm doing. I'm like, you have a pressure cooker here. You have all these people complaining sometimes about really minutia, mm -hmm. but they are pissed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you have to release a valve here yeah. because this, is, this has a potential to get so big. So I think when you come, when you, going back to why you brought this up, I don't know if you have different theories because I just, I, I can't understand how like people just are letting it all hang out, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. And you're like, sure, I, we're all big about being authentic and being yourself, but also you're going to work to accomplish certain things and you're getting paid to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And so at some point the energy has to be focused should be focused on what you're getting paid to do. Yeah. So this kind of bring everything to work creates a lot of unproductivity, not mm -hmm. productivity. Yep. The not being productive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also want to, on top of the pandemic uh, situation, as a result of that and having to, you know, be at home and working remotely, a lot of us, not all of us, um, cause there were segments of the, of the population that still had to go to work and thank you to those who had to do that. Yeah, for um, real. you know, for those of us who had the privilege of being able to work from home, I think th there were some lines that were blurred, yeah. right? Like we, we didn't, it, there was that, there was no separation of, all right, I'm at home, I'm leaving my home, I'm going into an office. So I, there's a, there's a break in there. Everything was just put together. So everything I'm consuming, everything I'm going through, everything I'm, 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 I'm processing is all one big glob of stuff. And so I think people just, um, they, 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 to your point, they need to relieve a valve and it's a pressure cooker. And so I need to be able to, to discharge this. Yeah. But I, I think sometimes we just, we lost that ability to be, um, to, to really think about discerning. Yes. That word. Like it, it's, word it's the, it's the compartmentalizing, yes. right? Like yes. what is, what is home like? which when we, were, when we were doing executive coaching during the pandemic, we constantly were asking, do you have a separate place to work, right? Because yeah. that, there was like a blur of where yeah. people were working in their bedrooms and their this and their that. Um, and I think it also, as you were talking, what came up for me is that we also kind of got used to being by ourselves, meaning like most of your day, even if you're on meetings and Zoom meetings, you're at home alone. And if you're off the Zoom meetings, you're doing your work by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So there's an aspect of Do we not having to socialize. Same, right? We forgot how to socialize they, with each other. The skills, that skill of, of, of being around people and the things, the, the things you don't even think about, like, you know, what so-and-so keeps on their desk, you know, you know, these little tiny facts about people that you don't even think about anymore because, you know, 
you're, if you worked, if you've been working from home or worked from home. Oh, that's a really good point because it's those little things that allow you to, it's those points of connection. So it's like, you know, this person has this picture, you can connect with them there. You have, you have this little trinket or whatever it is on your desk and you can ask about that and get some understanding of the person. We lost the ability to really be able to connect. Because, you know, by the way, this is so off topic, but we love people's desks and offices. <laughs> when we go see clients, oh, we're like, can What's you, can What's you the story take there? this around your What's office? Going? Where is this? Oh my God, you have three kids. And, and there's that, that, that piece um, that, again, in the same context, and we will talk about politics, promise, in the same context of what you were saying um, around we had certain skills, that uh, certain things that just kind of developed naturally of knowing stuff about mm-hmm. people. And what I was also saying about we never stopped to cope. We never stopped to learn how to manage people who work from home. Like there are some companies who always have had people who work from home, but those where it was new for, there was never any effort because by the way, I just want to make sure, cause this could become one of people could take this out of context and say, see, this is why you need to be in office. That's not what we're saying because there's ways to connect virtually as well. And right. so all of this comes back to the intentionality of how you build your workplace culture and how um, people what what norms and behaviors are mm-hmm. accepted, which mm-hmm. taking us back to the whole uh, political conflict, it, it's important for employers to keep in mind that the, in 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 most instances you can have a standard rule on whether politics can be talked about at work. Yeah. Right. So I, I want to put this out there that there's there's laws in many different states that will help you understand what what scope Mm -hmm. there is when it comes to like, do you have to let people talk about politics at work? And while I'm a lawyer, I'm not your lawyer and this is not a legal show. So I will just say, get some legal advice. Mm -hmm. Um, But most employers that I've worked with over the last 20 years will, will limit or, or uh, prohibit uh, political conversations at work. Mm -hmm. And all that does is set you up for like, if it happens, how you deal with it, because obviously you can't make people not do stuff, right? Right. People are going to be people and and Mm -hmm. show up with, again, their very deeply held beliefs that Mm -hmm. they tie to their, the political figure that Mm -hmm. they're, they're tied to and and, And their identity. Right. And Mm -hmm. then, cause it's definitely become a proxy for you're smart, you're dumb, you're this. And it's like, (laughs) I'm like, wow, y'all, this is, this is intense. So what types of conflicts can um, arise relating to politics at work? Uh, well, I mean, it starts just even in the political, con- like the, the conflict of the conversation, right? Like we're talking about politics. We have different beliefs and we express them with each other. Uh, and that alone, it's like, oh, okay. To your point, oh, you stupid. You can't possibly think <laughs> that this is the right so, thing to so do. So I think just if we're, just for the audience, we, we categorize these types of complaints into two types. Yeah. So there's personal, personal. disagreements mm-hmm. and then the professional disagreements right. that can relate. Right. So that one is more the personal where it's just you're kind of you're not really dealing with work. You're just having a conversation with someone and you start talking politics and that's what happens. I think that the, the next part of that is what is what happens when that tra- that comes into the work is where it's problematic for employers. Well, if we just stay in the personal for a second, mm-hmm. this goes to your blur comment where everything. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm hmm. Because I. From what I see, and again, curious to you, I don't see people differentiating between a personal conflict and a work conflict at work. It's just all conflict, mm. right? But the, why does it matter if it's starting off as a personal conversation that's not? Like, why does that matter in this whole grand scheme of, of what we're talking about? If it starts out as a personal conflict, um, could you take things personally? <laughs> Right. Like other things in in another episode, we talked about getting to the facts and getting to all these, you know, what happened, what was said, all these things. But when you when you have a a, that kind of personal, oh, now that now to that, whole, I'm I'm being attacked now or this person thinks I'm dumb and I'm going to fight you because now I my personhood is feeling like it's being questioned. And 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 that is an that is an issue that people then will let spread out into all parts. of Right. Because I was going to say, are they do from what you see, especially when you're doing facilitating and coaching, do mm-hmm. you see that people are able to compartmentalize those personal conversations from the rest of the work stuff, which I guess takes us over to the professional disagreements that can happen? Very rarely. <laughs> Very rarely. 
very rarely. And and if they can, it takes some it takes some coaching or it takes some 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 really great questions, right, to get people to be able to step outside of it. Because when you're in it, you're emotional and you're stirred up, and there's all sorts of things that are contributing to the way you're reacting to it. So, no, you the expectation shouldn't be that they can do that because most people can't. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they so foundational type stuff. They're going to bring it to whatever relationship or no, not relationship, but whatever um, conversation or work, whatever they're doing, it's going to come up. So I, I think about play this out. All right. So say you do in office work Mm -hmm. and you arrive to the workplace at a similar time as one of your colleagues Mm -hmm. and you see that they now have a political sign on their car that highlights the candidate that they're, they're the presidential the U.S. presidential candidate that they're voting for, and you say, "Oh, they're dumb, right? They're stupid," and decide for whatever reason, "Oh yeah, that's who you're." No, like, you maybe you guys judgment. get out of the car at the same time. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's who you're voting for. Why? And then the other person's like, "Mind your business, first of all." But this is why mm-hmm. you're not voting for this person. Mm-hmm. What? Why would I do that? Mm -hmm. Stupid, right? (laughs) Okay, so that happens in the parking lot. And say those two people work on a team together. How does that play out if they have to do a project together after having the, the intense sort of like mark in the sand that I think you're dumb because you vote for this candidate and I'm clearly morally superior to you, and then the, the, the vice versa. So how does that play out if now we have to come together and come up with a plan for something? Oh, I'm looking at you sideways. I, I don't trust, it's a trust thing now at this point. Like, I don't trust you because, how? Because this, cause for whatever I've made up about that different political view in my head, I'm now applying that to you. And so, for instance, if I think that people who vote for a certain candidate um, um, are racist or I think they're sexist or I think they're this. Now I'm looking at you like you're a racist and you're sexist and you're, you could not be any of those things. Correct. You just might like a certain person's, I don't know, fiscal policy. I don't know, making things up, right? But you, but because you, you have 10 toes down said I'm behind this person because you got a sign on your car, right? Now I'm like, huh, what is it? What is that? Now I'm questioning what you, how you think about me and how we're going to do this work. So it's not even about the work now. Right. And I think you're talking about it from the perspective of the questioner. So if you think about the person questioned, Mm. I think the first thing is like, why are you in my business? Now the answer is, well, why do you have that big ass sign on your car if you don't want me to say anything to you? I mean, because we live in America and you can do that. Sure, yeah. So there's that defensiveness that the person's already feeling of like, I'm just trying to go to work. And Mm -hmm. and, and in fairness, sometimes people forget they have all those things on their car, Mm -hmm. right? So... It's just like when people are on reality shows or whatever and they forget there's a camera on or people mm-hmm. are at a till, uh, a, a, you know, taking money and forget there's a camera and when they're, you know, take it, they're stealing oh, from the no. job. I feel like you put a, a sign, any, anyone, you put a sign on your car. You driving around with that sign on your car. Sometimes, but you don't see the outside of your car. But you know you put that sign on your car. <laughs> I mean, you do, but I'm saying like, let's, okay, come on. See, we don't always agree on everything. Um, if I'm, th- think about it from the standpoint, if you have no gas left, and you're saying I, the the play the way I play myself every time I'll get it in the morning, and then I never remember that I'm going to get it in the morning until I get in the car and see it. So what I'm saying is that sometimes you're not actually a, like, yes, you know you put it there, but you're not thinking about it every time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. But. The reason why I'm saying all of that is that that person is, whether they remember they put the sign in the car or not, or is still the defensiveness of being questioned sure. first. And then the layer of, and they are stupid if mm-hmm. they don't think this is the best sure. candidate. So why this all matters is politics and I would say politics, religion, and people's kids are probably the top three yeah. things that are yeah. the most infuriating charged. that's where people mm-hmm. are going to get the most charged yeah. so if yeah. we think about politics being probably one of the top three most charged type of conversation you could have mm-hmm. if someone has a conflict like that mm-hmm. even if that conflict lasted two or three minutes mm-hmm. the repercussions could be permanent mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. where it's like they won't work with each other or they won't trust each other or they will you know, constantly be trying to like back channel and get somebody to be against that person too, right? right? It's, it, right. it can, 
it can build into this really, really big thing. So wh- one thing I would just start off with in terms of when we talk about like what are ways to, to mitigate it. Uh, personally, if you're in a place where you can have a policy and mm-hmm. remind people early and often yeah. that we're not talking about politics at work, do that. There are or, too many- are there ways to talk about politics that are acceptable? <laughs> Your face. <laughs> She's like, don't do it. <laughs> no, but what are the ways? Can you? There are really no viable ways mm, because interesting. If, if you're thinking about it, it has to start it, for a conversation to be productive, even if like ours was, we didn't cuss each other out. We just don't agree. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's OK. Right. It has to start from a baseline of assuming good intent and the like. And mm-hmm. so if 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 the con- right now what's happening is people's presidential choices become a proxy for something for people. Right. So the second you know who someone if someone's revealing who they want to vote for, people are just immediately making a decision about what that means. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to mitigate. I don't see any viable way for any employer, nor would I recommend it because it's a waste of energy Mm. to try to create a foundation for a proper conversation because a proper conversation starts off with I can respect the fact that we might be different. But if you look at these memes that are out there, people are so line in the sand it's not political differences it's a moral thing if you're like okay so how would you ever be able to get to a place of anything being productive so to me it's just don't do it Mm -hmm. and remind people we respect people have choice we encourage you to exercise your right to vote but we are not talking about politics at work like this Mm. is not up for discussion here Mm. um because in the end a workplace does have to have a little bit of artificiality in that we need to create conditions to get the work done I have a question. Okay. So what happens when an organization takes a political stance? You have some organizations that are like social justice, like Ben and Jerry's and and others, who they have a political stance, and that's part of who they are as an organization. So what happens, even if you're not as upfront with it as, say, like a Ben and Jerry's, but if you you lean a certain way, talk to your lawyers and get legal advice about this. In terms of if you are deciding to take a firm stance on politics, Mm -hmm. you are essentially inviting political conversations. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's good to get the right advice on how to go about doing this. Such a lawyerly answer. Yeah. (laughs) So for for, for a mitigation thing for me is we're not doing that here. Mm Yeah. Okay. So... It is okay for work to be separate from home. Like, it is okay that you don't get to do everything at work that you can do at home and vice versa. (laughs) Like, really and truly, it's (laughs) It's funny. It's analogous to this. I keep seeing these memes of, like, what happened to secrets, right? Because when you're looking at these social media and, like, you know, any and everything, Everything. I don't want to know these things about you. There are certain things I don't even want to know about people I work with because it doesn't matter. I care about everyone. I want to make sure I'm honoring you, but I don't need to know every single detail. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know every single detail. So that's, that's one way. Just figure out your stance and communicate it often. Mm -hmm. How else can we resolve or mitigate against political conflicts at work? I mean, to your point of don't even have them, uh, (laughs) but when they do happen, you gotta be, you gotta be, I think you need to be responsive. Like, quick. (laughs) Yeah. Um, In terms of reiterating your policy, right? Like, this is the policy that we have. But then also as professional, like, people who, people professionals, the HR people, leaders, you really got to nip that in the bud, like, ASAP. And what, how, what does nip it in the bud look like? I mean, you, you acknowledge people, right? You always acknowledge and validate. That's always a good start. And uh, you, you know, you empathize with them and you, and then you double down on the policy. Great. But we can't, we have to keep this outside of work. If that's the policy, you just refer to whatever the policy is. But it's, you do have to start with an acknowledgement and validation of people in order for it to land. Right, right. So this might show up in HR is getting a complaint that has to be investigated. So the way you acknowledge and validate investigations is slightly different than if it's just we're not getting along. If it's just like, hey, I don't appreciate this conversation right, this acknowledge and validate, but the point of being responsive is to make sure that you're getting in there to understand the conflict, source of it, and trying to close it out, Mm -hmm. right? So, like, we do see often that sometimes these issues come up and they fester because no one goes and deals with it. So, again, hopefully we can prevent a lot of these things from happening by having whatever policy or parameters, Mm -hmm. but when they do arise, don't ignore them because, like, we just played out one of those examples, it proliferates, 
uh, in, in unexpected ways. Right. Um, if it's not dealt with. 100%. All right. So U.S. election season is coming. Mm-hmm. Politics have traditionally been taboo at work for all the reasons we talked about. Uh, we're at a time where uh, conflict, political conflict, is at an all-time high and just it's devolved to shit, as we would say. <laughs> Um, and so think about what that means for your workplace and whether these are conversations that make sense for your workplace or not. Obviously, our position is they don't. <laughs> um, and get that advice on what your, your states allow with regards to political conversations or ha- handling the conflicts. And when they arise, act quickly. Uh, do not let them fester because, again, it could lead to much bigger issues. So more on beef later. We appreciate you. We are appreciate. We are appreciate you. You see, with these words, we appreciate you for being here. Ooh, these words. We're gonna struggle with them. Yeah, find all us. Week. Find us. We're you know on where, the where, web. <laughs> the web. The internet. She keeps going I to the keep. internet. <laughs> Norfusfirm.com <laughs> forward slash podcasts. We are on uh, social media. Either what's the deal or the Norfus Firm. Yes. Um, Google search. You'll find us. Yes. And let us know what's what you're interested in. Talk soon. Bye. Here it is. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and leadership. That's the deal when you know what you're dealing with. Learn how to